Sponsored by the Mike Morse Law Firm, 855 Mike Wins. Jason Carr Live starts now. Hola. Guten Morgen. Hello. Gusto queso. <laughs> How's it going? Hey, did you hear Nordstrom has some muddy jeans that it wants you to spend $425 on? It's true. Faux muddy jeans. How do you have faux muddy? That's me. That's my phone. Mm -hmm. How do you have faux muddy jeans, John? What is this? Faux muddy? Faux. Fake muddy. As fake in mud. fake. Yeah, it's, it's a little ridiculous. I don't understand why someone would pay so much money for these, but, uh, I mean, they must have sold a few. Yeah, no. Pass. What's wrong? Your brow is furrowed. No, no, everything's good. Now, uh, in the description on their website, they said that these jeans embody rugged Americana workwear that seems, that seems some hardworking actions. And when worn, show you're not afraid to get down and dirty. I don't think that's what they show. I think that it shows that you maybe don't have a washing machine or that you just don't care about your appearance. Um, Melissa says she's going to start selling her husband's jeans for 150 bucks. They have authentic <laughs> mud and grease. Good morning to the Coleman's. The Associated Press published a piece on President Trump's first 100 days, and it revealed some uh, eccentric, amazing things, some word salads uh, up for analysis. But perhaps people overlooked one small quote. With the push of a red button placed on the Resolute desk in the Oval Office that presidents have used for decades, a White House butler soon arrived with a Coke for the president. <laughs> I mean, I would imagine that this button was was used, you know, hey, I need these papers brought in. I need uh, can I can we bring in some coffee for someone? But apparently the butlers already know that they're supposed to just bring a Coke. You're not, not even going to wait for the request. But a, a red button. That's what the red button means. And what's interesting is, uh, uh, you know, doing a little bit of searching this morning and in 2012, this is the president's suite. The Coca-Cola company is not happy with me. That's okay. I'll still keep drinking that garbage. What does that even mean? I don't know, but he's, he's definitely staying true to what he said then, and he's still drinking it. Can we see the picture of him with a Coke again and Kellyanne Conway? So she goes, wait, he's Diet Coke and she's with the regular? I, I guess. I mean, I don't know if this, this isn't obviously on the Resolute desk. This is in a different room, no. so uh, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I actually have a bit of a pure cane sugar Coca-Cola habit in the bottles. Oh yeah. So-called Mexican Coke mm -hmm. that you can buy um, for like, not cheap, it's like a dollar fifty a bottle at the grocery store. Yeah, you're buying it at the wrong grocery store. I get it for a buck. Where? Dearborn Kroger. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know it's National Pretzel Day today. Is it? We should have gone to Kroger and got super pretzels. You know oh, the. Yeah. Uh, the big ones mm -hmm. that you heat up, they're frozen, you put them in the oven for however long and then they come out like a hot Sam. Oh, stop it, you don't remember hot Sam. Only I remember hot Sam. You probably don't. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, Sam. Hot was Sam hot. was a hot pretzel stand uh, that was at the mall, like Northland, Southland, Eastland, Westland, Livonia Ball, uh, 12 Oaks, I guess, uh, back in the 70s. And they served a giant pretzel, pretzel with mustard. Ooh. Now, while we're on the subject of Coca-Cola, take a look at this. This was this morning. And uh, we've got Evrod and Rhonda with Coca-Colas with their names on it. How'd they get those? Evrod. I Evrod don't said know, that he actually. Is he sitting over there? He said that he never, uh, he could never find his name on the bottle. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know if they, they made. Uh, they must have sent it. They to made them. them for him, or, or what the deal was with these. How did you get this? How did I get that? Did they send it to you? You got a note. 
They sent it to you. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not like they had an extra one laying around. You, you didn't find it in the vending machine. <laughs> no, is what, no, yeah. No. But, and I can't you drink it either because I'll never get that. Well, you could keep the bottle or the label. Yeah, but it's like special Everide Cola. All right. Yeah. Along with the Everide pretzels. Yes. Uh, Joel, you do not remember Hot Sam. Don't even try it. Nobody remembers Hot Sam. Uh, father took a risk by letting his three-year-old pack his own lunch. It appears that all five major food groups are represented. <laughs> <laughs> all cheese puffs. <laughs> all cheese puffs. Oh, wow, look at you. You've Not one, not two, but three of these. For Everod. That's that cool. Right there. Would uh, would your son pack his own lunch that way? Yes. <laughs> but his would actually be pirate booty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Knows about that. Yeah. Oh, for sure. We got a bag in the cupboard. Pirate booty. Joel insists, I do, I do. I'm older than you. <laughs> um, wait until you become a parent. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to allow that many cheese puffs on the sofa. United Airlines is facing a new scandal. United Airlines cannot catch a break. <laughs> I mean, seriously. It's every week. Once a week, we've got a good United Airlines story, from the doctor being dragged off to the scorpion that hit somebody. Oh, how about the couple on the way to their honeymoon or their wedding or whatever yep. it was? United Airlines is facing a new scandal after the world's biggest bunny died in the cargo section of a Boeing 767 after flying out of Heathrow heading for the U.S. Simon, a three-foot-tall or long rabbit, had a checkup at the vet just three hours before the flight and was de declared fit to fly. Breeder Annette Edwards said Simon was expected to grow to be the world's largest rabbit but he was found dead after the plane landed at Chicago's O'Hare Airport. The airline now faces a legal claim from the person who bought Simon and from Edwards, who is a former Playboy model and once had plastic surgery to look like cartoon character Jessica Rabbit. Yeah, and look at this photo. I mean, it's just, <laughs> just absurd. Simon, a continental giant rabbit, was 10 months old. United Airlines issued a statement, quote, we are saddened to hear this news. The safety and well-being of all animals that travel with us is of the utmost importance to United Airlines and our pet safe team, end quote. The world has lost what would have been the largest rabbit. Mm -hmm. mm. Can we see the rabbit again? That's, that, I believe, is the rabbit. It was hard finding the exact pictures because it had so many pictures of Annette with uh, all of her rabbits that she's been breeding. Apparently, these rabbits, uh, continental giant rabbits, cost almost $5,000 a year in upkeep. And, uh, and she rents them out for movie sets and for all sorts of things at $500 a pop. Sharon says United Airlines should not be flying anybody or anything. I have to agree. Let's pay the cat tax. A pair of white tiger cubs born at a Chinese zoo in early April are said to be healthy and growing. The twin Bengali white tiger p cubs were born on April 6th. Their weight has almost doubled since then. The white tiger is a variant of the Bengal tiger, in case you're scoring at home. Apparently they have to, they, they, they bottle feed these things six times a day. Um, and they got to do it all by hand, so there's a, there's a whole lot involved in, in taking care of these things, but coming up next month, they're going to make their public debut. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? Really. Oh, tigers. Like many guys using the Tinder dating app, uh, Sedan loves the outdoors and travels widely. The catch, he's the world's last male white northern rhino and needs a mate. Isn't that sad? His profile reads, quote, I don't mean to be too forward, but the fate of my species literally depends on me. I like to eat grass and chill in the mud. I'm six feet tall and 5,000 pounds, if it matters. 
Poachers sell northern white rhino horns for tens of thousands of dollars, making them more valuable than co uh, gold or cocaine. How about that? Mm. Just hours after the animal went online, the number of hits was so high that the website crashed. <laughs> Reading some of these comments. Cuba's Bay of Pigs has been invaded again, this time not by U.S.-backed anti-Castro forces, but by millions of red, yellow, and black land crabs. Can we get this full? <laughs> Apparently this, this happens every year, and it's... Uh... It causes a whole lot of problems because their their shells are so sharp that even when you're driving down these roads and you're crushing them, uh, you can pop tires. That really? Easy. Yeah, I guess so. And they they crawl all over houses and and they they they're everywhere. How many of them? Uh, many. 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 <laughs> And they come just out of the water and... No, after the first spring rains, the crab march uh, from surrounding forests to the southern coast to spawn in the sea. Really? Uh, yeah, at dawn and dusk they emerge, scuttling sideways towards the sea, climbing up house walls and carpeting the coastal road. Eee, boy, that school bus doesn't care about him, does he? Nope, just... <laughs> <laughs> The circle of life. <laughs> I, I, have, I have music to go along with this. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Can you restart the video? Yeah. Um, again, this is crabs invading Cuba. How about that? Poor crab. I wonder if there are good eats. Well, look at this guy. He's trying to like weave in between them and, oh, nope. <laughs> One of these days I'll have the music for it. Hang on. <laughs> SpongeBob, me boy. One of those crabs is named Eugene. You know it. Oh, absolutely. What well, was your, your uh, opinion of SpongeBob? As a youth, I was a little bit too old when it finally came out that I was I was past it. I didn't I didn't find it yeah. very interesting though. No. Um, video clips released by a giant panda breeding and research center in China may teach us all a lesson on how to keep fit. The video reveals the giant panda's typical workout regime, um, or regimen rather. A panda named Yayun can be seen working out with her uh, arms on monkey bars. Mm-hmm. This is like CrossFit. This is CrossFit, yep. And then here it is on a tire swing. Uh, you know, yeah, this is, this is the fitness made easy with the new workout regimen from China. Todd Coleman still watches SpongeBob. I have to confess that I watch it with my daughter as well. Mm -hmm. SpongeBob! Um, Apparently the land crabs eat garbage, so not good eats. Oh. Well, all crabs eat, eat not, I mean, not necessarily garbage, but they don't eat, uh, you know, they're scavengers. They, they just they yeah. pick up whatever they can find. Right. Um, Human toes. You know, whatever you find in the forests of Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> the forests. <laughs> um... We lost our minds when Twinkie-flavored ice cream hit frozen food aisles. Now Hostess is dropping another Twinkie varia variation for the freezer section. This is coming to us from our friends at Food Beast. Frozen Twinkie-flavored ice cream cones, sort of like the drumstick, mm -hmm. is something that you can buy now at the grocery store. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Twinkie the Kid. Yeah. <laughs> I this remember Twinkie the white. Kid. It's got to be a certain age. 
coming up um, yesterday on on uh, bowl of bacon I asked what name something you uh, have never tried and never planned to try mm. and people like wigged out they were like oh, let me tell you about, about that today I ask all right what have you tried and would try again not as enthusiastic no I mean we're getting We'll, we'll have enough to read to you at 12.30 on the Midday Live. Um, but do you think that people are more naturally pessimistic? Absolutely. Like, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't even know how I'd answer either one of those questions. What was your answer? Um, something I have never tried and never will. Uh, head cheese. Mm-hmm. Okay. Something I've tried and will never try again, haggis. What's that? Um, it's like it's like guts or something. It's like uh, oh. haggis is a Scottish dish. It's like they take the I'm going to completely destroy this, but they take like the lining of the stomach and stuff it with the intestines, and then there's some gizzards from other animals in there. And I, I mean, it's. It is, I, I tried it on live television, and I bit into it, and I took one chomp, and I went, hmm, mm. and, and it was a food guest. Yeah. It was a Scottish food guest, so I was, it was not my intent to insult, but you got to know, most people don't have the taste for haggis. <laughs> I don't know. Who has a taste for haggis? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Todd says, oxtails. Uh, Walter, I will never try again. Liver, that's nasty. Ugh, so much. Ugh. Ugh. You didn't answer the question. What would I try? What the engineering is walking up behind you. Um, yesterday we talked about what we would... Um, what I would never try now. Mm -hmm. Like, I've done a lot of thrill-seeking and that sort of extreme edge stuff, but now that I'm a parent, I wouldn't, like, bungee jump or skydive. Whereas uh, at one point, I would have. But have you done you that? Won't. I have not, no, but I Do would. Do it now before you become I a would. parent. I'll, yeah, yeah. Matthew London says, uh, I believe he's re referencing haggis here, sheep's guts stuffed with oats and barley equals haggis. Amazing. Oh, haggis. it's... See, but I'll try anything. I would definitely try that. And then, you know, maybe like 10 years later, you got to try it again to see if your taste buds have changed. Uh, but they probably wouldn't. And it, it, I have, I've acquired a taste for food. I, I guess I didn't really think of myself as being a particular eater when I was young. Mm -hmm. But I had a narrow mindset of what I liked. You're, like, you're set by what your parents are always putting in front oh, of you. I, you know, I grew up eating American food. You know, sp Wednesday was Prince Spaghetti Night, and we'd have mm -hmm. steak or cheeseburgers or chicken wings or just very typical mashed potatoes and gravy, french fries. Um, as I've gotten older, though, my tastes have expanded. My, my wife introduced me to sushi, and that's only been within the last, about, well, less than 15 years, about 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I grew up, I never had really blue cheese much, and uh, then one day, it, you know, it just made that big of an impression on me. Blue cheese? Blue cheese. Roquefort. Roquefort. <laughs> it's made in a cave. You know that? I think, I, did, did you tell me that? Well, I feel like I we've talked have. about it before. So when I worked at the Dearborn Inn, we had a, a Roquefort filet, so I was always selling that every night and talking about it. And anyways, I learned a lot about Roquefort cheese. And the story goes that a man was eating a cheese sandwich in the cave, and he saw a pretty woman walk by, so he put down his cheese sandwich and went, and then he came back a week later to go retrieve his cheese sandwich, and it was covered in blue mold. And that's how they discovered that the caves in Roquefort had these correct conditions to make Roquefort cheese. I think it's a little bit of a tall tale, but... But it makes for a great story. Absolutely. Grandpa Harris, my mom's dad, um, never called it blue cheese. He always just called it Roquefort. All blue Hand cheese. Hand me the Roquefort. <laughs> <laughs> Limburger cheese. Ugh. Hey, take a look at this. I've got a... Uh... Some Will Ferrell cats oh over boy. there. Mm -hmm. It looks like they're taking a nap. 
rich and compelling. What are they doing? Just chilling? Yeah. Chilling just like chillin'. a villain? <laughs> oh, we have breakers. What's going on? What do you got? Anything? No? Nothing? Came home to find my mom cooking cow tongue. Never tried, never will. Buffy only just started eating ham about a year ago. What? And did not eat her first burger until she was 27? How's that possible? I'm in disbelief. How is that even possible that a person can make it to 27 years old in the United States of America never having had a burger? Maybe she was raised by vegans. That's well, possible, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Hey, Nancy Phillips Clemens, how are you? Where's everybody watching from? This is our daily um, roll call. Who's got the record right now for farthest out of uh, everybody watching? Who thinks that they are the farthest from Detroit, Michigan? Joel says tongue is great on a hot Sam pretzel. Jason Gomez is checking in from Saginaw, Michigan. Tammy's in Dearborn Heights. Joel's in Roseville. Clinton Township for Gary and Pam Sprouse. Um, Mary Bernardi is coming to us from Dreamland. Dreamland? Hmm. Buffy O'Keefe says, my parents tried and tried. I was the worst of picky eaters, which is why she never had a burger until age 27. A burger, the most American of foods, right? Chris Kemp's checking in from Brooklyn. Pineville, Missouri. Sheila. I think we have the winner so far. Sheila checking in from Missouri. Show me you're from Missouri. What are you doing over there? I feel like you're... Uh... I was looking for a different kitten cam. So, I don't know where this one is exactly, but there's a whole mess of cats in this one. What is it? You can't even tell them apart. No. I think there's a face there and a... And this a, one looks there's like a, a nose puppy. There and... Okay, here's the mama cat's head, body, tail. All they do is sleep. And there's probably like 10,000 people watching this worldwide right now. Um, let's see. Uh, no, it, it only 289 people watching that one. On the Werel, uh, the Will Ferrell kittens, though, there's uh, 829. Worldwide. Yeah. That's just a small place in Vancouver. Matthew London's in KPAC. Uh, don't forget, coming up at the top of the hour in 21 minutes, we have Live in the D with myself, Chuck, and Tati. Um, you ever notice how much the Rensen uh, looks like Alexa? It does, doesn't it? Can you put that back up there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alexa, play something by the cult. Oh, She's it just lit up. It did. Uh, Alexa. How long to make a hard-boiled egg? Well, she's lighting up, but she's not. No. She's not responding. Did you see the thing about the the parrot that ordered something like three hundred and fifty dollars worth of crackers from Amazon by talking to the Alexa? <laughs> You're pulling my leg. No, no, this was a real story, and uh, the the parrot had you know his owner orders stuff off of Amazon all the time using Alexa and apparently had mimicked this exact same process and somehow ordered $350 worth of crackers. Charday uh, Ducca wants to know, I keep coming late, why? Why? Uh, did she, does she think the show's called the 930-ish? I don't know, because it's 942 now. 915-ish. Ish. Ish. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, hello there, uh, Angela in Knoxville, Tennessee. 
one last look at our top story, Nordstrom selling jeans um, with a synthesized, I guess, caked on muddy coating for $425. Only $425. The Barracuda straight leg jeans, the company states about those embody rugged Americana workwear that's seen some hard work in action. And when worn, they show you're not afraid to get down and dirty. It's ridiculous. Can you show that? Show it full? Would you pay $425 for a pair of jeans that look like that? I wouldn't pay more than $50 for a pair of jeans. 50 I think that's, I, even $50 is kind of a lot of money for jeans, right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's where I'm drawing the line. How much? $50 tops for a pair of jeans. Absolutely. That's the most that you would spend. Mm -hmm. And even then, I'd be like, do I really need 50 to win the league? I can find, you know, no. <laughs> I'm told that we have a two-year-old watching. Oh, really? All right. Jill uh, Goolsby says that her two-year-old, or a two-year-old, watching with her. Well, all right then. Let's Z, get some... Z, 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 what begins with Z? I do. I am a zizzer, zazzer, zuz, as you can plainly see. X is very useful. You use it when you say, I could go on. Uh, please. <laughs> Nixie Knox. Axe and Extra Fox. Aunt Annie's Alligators, AAA. I've completely lost my marbles. <laughs> Whatever happened to Jason Carr? Oh, he's doing a Facebook Live for two year olds. <laughs> 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 Drawing pictures of sad Ken. We'd like you to do more of those too. Do you get the whole click on team? We'll oh yeah. A, yeah, a collage of them. I gotta get a uh, sad David involved there. Mm -hmm. Sad Dustin. Uh, Joel spends five bucks at Foreman Mills. Dalton is the two year old's name in Wolverine Lake. Hello, Dalton. What did you think of my reading of Dr. Seuss's ABC 123? <laughs> you know those jeans, by the way. Mm -hmm. The guys that come to uh, uh, work on my pool, that like they take the cover off and get all that cleaned up and then skim the pool and everything. I mean, it's a messy job. By the time they get done, their jeans is just like that. Isn't it amazing? You can buy a pair of jeans and wear them, and it's an investment, apparently. Yeah? And do what? Oh, I guess it's like an investment, right? You buy. Hey, did you hear? I was just reading a fascinating article. I don't know if any of you out there collect sneakers, so called sneaker heads that treat like classic Air Jordans, like they're works of art to be preserved in a museum. Did you know that moisture and air. Now, you think about plastic, right? You think about something synthetically made and you think oh that's going to end up in in the ground forever a thousand years from now a pair of air jordans will still be intact in the ground because they're made of plastic and, and rubber one would think right no polyurethane mm -hmm. degrades over time from air and moisture so no matter how hard you try to preserve like there are two thousand there there are air jordans from 10 years ago that are falling apart i can tell you're riveted by that that's, I mean, I didn't realize it was just air and moisture. Air and water. Like, a scientist said the only way that you could preserve them is to put them in a heavy steel airtight container filled with argon. Would be the only way that you could actually preserve sneakers. I mean, some of those, it's probably worth it to get that container filled with argon for those Jordans. There's uh, a certain model of Air Jordan tennis shoes from 1985 that are prized by collectors because the soles are actually made of real rubber and not polyurethane. Mm -hmm. uh, so they don't degrade, they don't fall apart. Like, well, they're the most dangerous shoes available. More people get killed over Air Jordans than any other shoes. Oh, I see I what mean, you're saying it, about the, it, the Air Jordans brand, are the, the model. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, Chardé, I wish that um, I had the fortune, the estate of Dr. Seuss. Mm -hmm. I, did, I wrote a children's book. I just haven't gotten around to drawing it yet or finding an artist whose um, style jibes with the content. Your style, all right? Ah, I don't know. I don't have the 
the scope of skills necessary to bring a backyard uh, filled with bugs to life. I don't think. I suppose I could try, but then it would be it would become a, a, a labor sort of thing. Hey, now take a look at this. Looks like they got the sand at Campus Marshes out there. Is that the beach? Yeah, that looks like the beach. Is that there the beach at Campus Marshes? I guess I know where I'm going afterward. I can't remember. I, I think I, I started to read my children's book before, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, we did that. One of these days. Everybody have a great day. Uh, we will see you on TV here in about 14 minutes. Stay classy, Detroit. Jason Carr Live was sponsored by the Mike Morris Law Firm, 855-Mike-Wins.